All right, so this is what I imagined when I envisioned having my own authority, having a date with my beautiful wife, <laughs> having some yummy pizza for lunch, and having a pretty decent paying load uh, to go and pick up. So uh, I'm gonna eat lunch and go pick up this load. Let's Let's do this. I'm making you hungry. I know I am. You are getting hungry. All right. We uh, got our paperwork. All we gotta do is go back, preload a trailer, just go hook up to it. What do you guys say? You guys ready? You guys ready for this? You guys ready for this? Look at those bugs are still on there. I'm gonna go wash the truck right now. Right now. I just wanted to get over here and get this load before uh, before it got too late. Had a uh, had a little bit of an earlier pickup, and it's a later uh, drop off. So yeah, we're just gonna run it real quick, get over there, and uh, go park this trailer back in our spot before we go deliver it tonight. So let's get back there and do that. All right, all right. All right, my friends, we got another load. You see what it says on the front of that trailer? You see what that says? It's gonna get loud, the engine's gonna get loud, forgive me. But I want you guys to see this. What does that say? That's right, we got ourselves a convoy. But uh, yeah, man. You say, uh, Nick, that last convoy load was kind of terrible for you, right? Why are you doing another one? Well, number one, they're really the only broker that has power only freight. So that works in their favor. Number two, this is actually a decent paying load. All right, and we'll get into that in a little bit. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. I gotta, I gotta keep, you know, some sort of a, some sort of a, a, a cliffhanger for you guys. A little hook for you guys. Gotta keep you watching. Keep you watching. You gotta wait to hear what that, uh, what that, uh, what that rate is on this load, man. It's a decent rate. So uh, I'll let you guys know, fill you guys in on the uh, the information on the load. Let me slide these tandems uh, forward so we can get out of here, and then uh, I'll probably just catch up with you guys tonight when we're on our way to uh, the first drop. All right, ten four, good buddy. All right, see you then. All right, we're getting we're getting the first bath. And look, we got a got us another 389 next door. That was a 2015. Still looks freaking brand new. You guys takes care of his truck. I hope my truck looks that good. Six years old. There we go. Got to get it cleaned up. Well, guys, Safeway put me in the dirt lot. You see that? And the wind's howling, so there's dust everywhere. So clean the truck just to come over here and get parked in the dirt. I love Safeway. I love Safeway. All right, so you guys can see that I got parked in the dirt right after I got the truck washed. Well, that's to be expected. Anytime you come to Safeway in Tracy, they're going to park you in the dirt and tell you to walk up to the... Uh, to the guard shack you're gonna walk up there and uh i i tried to record a little bit but the wind is howling which isn't unusual that's why they have the clean energy big you know uh windmills generating electricity here because it's always windy so uh anyway i didn't i, I tried to record some but it's just i mean it's uh, i don't know i don't want to blow your guys your drums out um i want to get you guys you know footage of what i'm doing but <laughs> you guys didn't want to hear that i mean i could have like put some music over it and muted it, but then you wouldn't really hear what the lady was saying anyway. So anyway, um, you come in, you go in, you go check in at the guard shack and, uh, they tell you, all right, go park in the dirt and wait until we call you. And then I asked her, I said, Hey, what, you know, how long's the wait tonight? You know, sometimes it's more than others. And she goes, ah, like hour or two, hour or two, just before you get a door. Um, so hour or two before you get a door, then you get a door then it takes them however long it takes the lumpers to get your load. And then once that happens, then, you know, you got to call in for your lumper, um, for your lumper fee, uh, for your, your comm check or EFS or, um, 
all that. I, I actually haven't done it with combo yet, so we'll see how that goes tonight. Hopefully it works. Uh, hopefully they get it. They get it solved. But um, yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. And um, yeah, I I planned. I knew this this dirt lot was here. Um, I washed the truck anyway because the truck just needed it. And uh, I brought all my own stuff to uh, rub on the truck a little bit once I get onto the concrete and when we're actually in a door. Um, and then depending on how long it takes them to offload me, I might be taking a little nap. But uh, the plan tonight is to get offloaded here and then start heading south towards Oxnard um, to where we're going to drop the trailer tomorrow morning. And um, I'm probably going to stop like, I don't know, I'm thinking like maybe two in the morning and then um, start up again around noon, finish the way down to uh, Oxnard and um, yeah, be looking for a load coming back um, Wednesday afternoon. So that's the plan as of now i'm trying to work that out um you know if i have to run a little a little harder if i have to do an a2 split seven three split because i'm waiting so long here i'll figure out a way to get down there and get another load um but i was looking at the load board and a lot of those wednesday loads that i was looking at already got scooped up um so i'm hoping that some of them get dropped tomorrow canceled whatever moved around or more get added and then um maybe there'll be some more power only for me to grab uh, convoy is really the the power only um that you know the only one that i'm really looking at that has power only right now so everything i'm doing is convoy loads um i've got another load lined up for uh next week that i already just grabbed early because um it seems like that's what you got to do if you want to get it and uh they were offering a decent rate so i took it i took it and i'm gonna run a light load down into a good market and i feel pretty good about it so um so anyway, so yeah, but tonight, that's all we're going to do. We're going to try and get down towards Bakersfield, and um, we'll see how that goes. Well, I don't know. Uh, well, it really, this is a crapshoot. Um, that's why, you know, I offered what I offered on this, and we'll get to that later. You like the way I keep doing that? Keep doing that? Keep stringing you guys along? I'm, I'm getting good at this YouTube stuff. You guys got to keep watching if you want to hear how much the rate is on this load. You got to keep watching. I'm not going to just give it to you for free. You got to wait through an ad right here. <laughs> All right, so we got our door, but uh, we, uh, man, of course the wind kicks up. Okay, so we got our door, but as you can see by the green flashing light, uh, they have not yet locked us in. We don't have any lumpers unloading us. So uh, we've already been here for two and a half hours. And um, yeah, we'll see see how long it takes for us to get out of here tonight. But uh, we're not worried about it. Um, a lot of loads we're looking at are, are Wednesday night loads um, out of Oxnard. So uh, yeah, we got plenty of time. So not in a hurry. We're getting paid for this, right? Yeah. And we're getting paid extra now that we're over two hours. So, uh, and Convoy is real good about paying the detention. It's one of the reasons why I came back to Convoy is because, uh, man, they took care of me on that first load. They really did. So, uh, anyway, let's see, uh, let's get out of this wind. Ooh. All right, so that was pretty easy. Um, basically, they called me right now. They said, hey, uh, well, I felt the shaking, obviously, of the uh, forklift going in and out of the trailer. So I knew they were unloading me. Uh, then they called me from the lumper service and said, hey, it's going to be $44, which is the lowest lumper fee I've ever like heard of. I mean, I've, I've seen them like $250, $350, like way up there uh, back, you know, five years ago when I was running around in the drive-in. So I wasn't expecting $44. I was like, huh? But I think that it's... Um, I think it's already pre-palletized because it was coming from a Safeway facility to this Safeway facility. So they're not like breaking down the pallets and, and doing all that stuff. So anyway, um, but it was super easy in the Convoy app. You just hit support up in the right-hand corner of your job. And then you select request um, lumper fee. And then it says, you know, um, uh, um, EFS check. Uh where are you? Trace, California. Um, the um, lumper company. And then how much do they want? And then it gives you instant 
instant code, EFS code. It says, okay, here's your code. And then you call the people back. Um, and you say, hey, I've got the money code. And then you give it to them. The longest part was waiting on hold for about two minutes with them. Um, but yeah, so that's that. They got paid. Um, all I need now is for someone from the warehouse to come and bring my paperwork at me. And then uh, I'll be ready to get out of here. It only took, so far, four hours and 17 minutes. So we're, we're right on par with, I think, that's pretty typical of Safeway and Tracy. So uh, like I said, we're getting paid for it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're almost out of here. And I don't think we're going to get down to Bakersfield tonight. I think we're going to stop short of Bakersfield. Um, I don't feel like driving until 5 in the morning and then trying to sleep when the sun comes up. I think I'm going to stop a little sooner, sleep, um, and I think I'll take an 8 eight hour. Um, I already did, obviously, 2 in the sleeper at least. So I think I'm going to do an 8-2 split. I might do a 7-3 split now that those are a thing. So... I don't know. I'm playing around with those because I'm I'm I've never used them. I've been a local driver, paper logs and all that good stuff. So um, it's all new to me. So we'll see how all that goes, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right, peace. All right, so uh, three fifteen in the morning. So it ended up being six hours and fifteen minutes at uh, Safeway in Tracy. So I'm just about pooped. I got to go close these doors, and then. Uh, get the heck out of here and I don't know where I'm gonna stop tonight I don't know what I'm gonna do I'll be just completely honest with you guys I have no clue how I want to work my clock I think I'm just gonna drive until I get tired and then crawl back into the sleeper and take a nap we'll see uh, we'll see how that works out all right yes that is the Sun coming up and yes we just got here to uh, the pilot pilot uh, at highway 46 so we are shutting it down it's 6 30 we'll get back up again at 4 30 in the afternoon we'll finish this load down and uh that's when i'll let you guys know what this load paid um so we'll uh yeah i'll fill you guys in on on all that what it paid um what the rate per mile is since everyone wants to know what my rate per mile is everyone cares so much about my business i guess i'm putting my business out there so that's just the way it is right people are gonna share their opinion on it so good for you uh but i've been up all night i've been up 23 hours so it's time for me to get some rest thank you hours of service rules for um keeping me from getting sleep instead of forcing me to get sleep and, and putting me behind schedule. So somehow I'm both tired and behind schedule because uh, hours of service rules, because uh, I would have stopped and slept and it would have been a lot different. I would have, I would have, uh, yeah, anyway. Really the problem is, is that I didn't want to sleep um, when I was sitting around for six hours at Tracy at a Safeway and Tracy because I would I knew I needed to sleep I knew I needed to take time off so um, why am I gonna sleep on the clock and then not be able to sleep on my 10 off and so anyway I should have got a little nap in but I was on the phone I was talking to you guys so all right let's uh let's let's get some shut eye I'm tired and then um, when we start heading uh, down to Oxnard this afternoon. I'll let you guys know, uh, you know, all the, all the good stuff. Let you guys know what's going on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Good night. All right. So we're on our way, guys. We are on our way. Uh, we're at the bottom of the grapevine, coming up to uh, the scale bottom of the grapevine don't you love how they always put scales at the bottom of a big grape at least in california it seems like they do so that you got to lose all your momentum and then uh go go climbing the hill so 
anyway, I'm empty, so I'm not that worried about it. Uh, I'm not actually not worried about it at all. What I'm more worried about is that there is a, uh, a high wind warning up there, and I'm empty. And so it says high winds over the, over the uh, over the pass, gust or it says gusty winds over the pass. So there's nothing that's like showing like you know that that I should pull over or stop. But it's going to be one of those things where I'm going to be monitoring how bad it is. There were some gusty winds last night on I-5, and we we stuck it out pretty good. So um, yeah, so I'm hoping that it'll be like that going up over over the grapevine. So. We'll see, but uh, this scale is open uh, 24-7, 365. So unless you have pre-pass, you're stopping at this scale uh, every time. So uh, we're gonna pull in here, let me see. I don't know how this, I don't know how this works to be honest. I don't remember if it's, uh, it's like a uh, it's an empty thing I'm not sure yeah empty trucks left lane all right Windows down a touch. After we get through these scales, I'm going to talk about uh, the load run finally. Finally, you guys get to hear the, the juicy details of the load I'm on and what we're uh, what we're doing. So, looks like it's like I, I can either idle at four miles an hour or six miles an hour. So, uh, we haven't gotten an inspection yet, so they may want to pull us in. You never know. But today wouldn't be a bad day for it. We got time. So this load, um, as we approach the grapevine, uh, Trucker John just did a video where he came came down. Well, I guess it's going north, so it's going up. But he came. This is the the long side. 
So when you're coming down this side, it's uh, it's a 35 mile an hour descent that he went down. So uh, yeah, you gotta grab a load here and truck it all the way down. So anyway, so he he did that, and uh, he actually mentioned me in that video. I was just watching watching you know my normal YouTube routine where I'm on my phone. I'm trying to answer some comments on my channel while I'm watching other people's stuff on the TV, and I'm just trying to kind of you know keep up with everybody. It's hard. Uh, I got a lot of a lot of people that I want to try to keep up with a lot of people that uh, I like their channels and I want to watch them and I get entertainment and information out of the, the their channel so I uh, so I definitely I, I was trying to get it I, I was trying to do that and I'm sitting there and then he's like said something about Bellox and I'm like wait what <laughs> to rewind a little bit what did he say oh yeah he said the Bellox 18 mr. Bellox is a uh, Cause I was running running down to Bakersfield that day that was the day of my first load he was coming this way so we were within proximity of each other could have could have seen each other but uh, anyway we're going up uh, which is means we're going down to LA ah, whatever you guys get it so so this load uh, I picked up 20 miles from the yard from where I uh, from where I park and uh, go ahead mr. 389 let's do this look at he's got some fresh grease on that fifth wheel he's ready to rock and roll all right we're not supposed to be in this lane but I also don't want to go uh, the same speed as these other trucks that are trying to climb the hill. See this guy, this guy is in the number three lane getting passed in the number four, Dingleberry. All right, we're outlawing it. We are outlawing it, guys. Number two lane in. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, what I was saying is this load. All right, so we picked it up 20 miles from the house. Uh, we drove it uh, 70 miles to deliver the load in Tracy, California. Picked it up from Merced, drove it 70 miles to deliver it. And then uh, delivered it at uh, that terrible, terrible place uh, called Safeway Distribution Center in Tracy. Uh, six hours and 15 minutes later, after my appointment, we got out of there. Uh, and then I have to uh, take this load 330 miles empty uh, to deliver the trailer down to Oxnard. So this was a similar setup as the one that I was going to do last Friday that ended up getting totally messed up because the load got partially canceled and all that stuff. So uh, another convoy load where they're trying to like bundle together a delivery up north with an uh, empty trailer move down south. That's all that's happening. So I kind of like that because people don't, don't want to do it uh, and I see why. I probably should have bid even a little bit higher than I did because it kind of took a day and a half rather than just one day. If Safeway would have been on the ball, I could have gotten all the way to Oxnard last night, dropped the trailer, uh, and been ready to get a load this morning from Southern California. But instead, uh, or not this morning, but this afternoon, uh, instead I had to stop in Lost Hills at Highway 46. And so uh, anyway, but I bid $1,450 for, for this load which it's a total of 440 miles, including going, you know, deadheading to go, or bobtailing to go pick up the trailer and then taking taking it over there. So all in, uh, all my miles are 440 miles. Um, and I bid 1450, which that's the bid that I was awarded. And then I, I got, uh, because Safeway and Tracy is such a terrible place, they gave me an extra $171 in detention. And so, uh, with $171 in detention plus the $1450, that comes out to $1,621. Uh, 
So $1,621 on 440 miles. If you don't have your calculator handy, that is $3.68 uh, $3 per mile. And that is all miles from the yard to delivering the trailer. Like not, it's not just loaded miles. It's not just all that bull crap, how people try and try and get you by they try and try and trick you by saying that, oh yeah, this is four dollars a mile. It's like, well yeah, but you had to deadhead 150 miles to get it, so add those miles in and see what your mileage comes out to. But uh, anyway, nevertheless, uh, yeah. So this is a decent load still. Um, I missed out on some loads um, that I was trying to get for this evening and for tomorrow morning. Uh, I got I got outbid, and uh, and uh, well, that's just that's the nature of being power only and trying to run uh, a lane that I'm pretty unfamiliar with and I don't really know what's going on and I'm trying to pre uh, schedule loads now uh, which means that I'm you know I'm competing with a bunch of people and uh, convoy doesn't want to pay the money that I that I want to make so I'm bidding like thousands of dollars over what these loads are getting bid at by other carriers which is just mind-blowing to me um, that other carriers would run 800 miles for $900 like and so I part of me thinks that the convoy app is just kind of lying to me um, it's kind of the only thing I can think right like like they got to be lying to me because unless it's just a lot of guys that are running on some paid off trucks trying to trying to hustle and run you know uh, run 3,000 3,500 miles a week and they're just trying to run back and forth without any fogs or anything I don't know some true outlaw stuff going on there I think but uh anyway uh so yes yeah, so that's the load we're on and uh I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get a load set up for early tomorrow morning because I really wanted to try to uh get home deliver something Thursday afternoon and um and then uh pick up another load Thursday night to deliver down here Friday and try and get something else on the truck Friday to deliver Saturday. I wanted to try and get another trip in uh, before the weekend because I have a load set up Sunday night from home coming down to Riverside. So I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to mess with that. So I'm not, I don't want to end up down here on the weekend and not be able to get home or get back up north where my you know, my next week's going to be starting on Sunday. So I pre, uh, I pre, um, uh, bid on that load and got myself set up and I'm going to be looking, I already have a bid in for uh, a Monday afternoon load from down South to go back North. So I'm trying to set myself up on like a, a schedule ahead of time so that I'm not always scrambling and hoping that things just pop up on the load board, uh, which is what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Just going to be hoping that things pop up, you know, uh, hoping that things that that they get a little desperate and they want to pay me what it's worth to, to run it um, I bid on one that's actually coming from Northern California down here um, and I just bid super high like hey if you want me to bobtail and go get it I will <laughs> so I don't know we'll see we'll see uh, I mean it's convoy you can just throw bids on whatever you want you can just th bid it as high as you want I mean what's the worst that could happen it just ignores you and tells you you lost the bid. All right, cool. Then I'm no different than you know anything. But if they're like, oh yeah, we'll give you $3,500 to bobtail up, pick up the trailer, uh, deliver it down to Southern California, you know, it's like, all right, cool. Then I just, I just got myself a uh, an extra trip, kind of, uh, and I got paid really well to do it. So I, I doubt they'll accept that bid, but you never know. You never know until you throw the bids out there and see what they say. So anyway, so that's the load we're on. Uh, Let's keep going over the grapevine, um, and uh, I'm not going to take you on the whole trip like Trucker John did. If you want to see this whole stretch of road, go check out Trucker John. Uh, he runs for Prime Inc., and he, uh, yeah, he did a whole, a whole shebang uh, up and over the grapevine. And uh, anyway, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys down in the Nard. <laughs> uh, 
I used to live in Ventura, which is right next to Oxnard. And uh, and I, yeah, I, it's called the Nard. I don't know. The Nard. My brother lives in Camarillo, which is right there. So I'm going to try and see my brother tonight. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys more down there. Peace. All right, so we are here at uh, Procter and Gamble in Oxnard, and um, the Schneider truck got in right in front of us, which was good because he showed us where to go. I mean, there's signs everywhere, but you know how it is. The address actually takes you up to this front gate, but you got to come in a side gate for trucks, so. Anyway, we'll go check in, drop this trailer, and then I'm gonna go hang out with my family. My brother and my parents, they're over in Camarillo, next town over. So, uh, yeah. I'll uh, check in with you guys when I see them over there. All right? All right. All right, just hanging out with my brother um, in his living room. Um, we've been here, I've been here a little while. I actually saw my parents. They were here having dinner with them on their way back from my dad getting some uh, pre-treatment uh, appointments for this last bit of radiation to try and get rid of the cancer but uh, anyway so I got to see them um, I beat my nephew at Madden <laughs> Silas I'm now one and two against you so I redeemed myself from getting slaughtered the last couple times um, and uh, yeah and my my nephew Parker is learning to play the guitar and my brother's learning how to play the banjo and so they were messing around a little bit so show you guys uh, I'll let them play this video out just listen to the serenading sounds of the uh, of the banjo. All right, love you guys. Peace.